wavelength division multiplexing. Uh, so speaking about this uh, wavelength division multiplexing, it's a kind of a multiplexing technique uh, working in the wavelength domain. And, and also, it's, it's an uh, analog multiplexing technique to combine optical signals. Yes, that would be the uh, a very specific uh, explanation about uh, wavelength division multiplexing. It is called as WDF. So the, the predominant question would be, uh, what is uh, WDM? Yes, it's like uh, in, in fiber optic communications, this wavelength division multiplexing is, is a kind of technology which multiplexes multiple optical carrier signals on a single optical fiber. Yes, you could see this uh, multiple carrier signals on a, a single optical fiber, but, but how does it get uh, differentiated? How do we differentiate? <laughs> We differentiate by using uh, different colors of uh, laser light to carry different signals. So it's a kind of multiple optical signals on the same optical fiber. That is a technique of uh, WDM. If you just uh, categorize this uh, WDM, it is being uh, classified into two main things. One is called as CWDM and the other one is DWDM. C stands for coarse WDM and uh, D stands for dense WDM. So speaking about this uh, CWDM, it generally operates with eight channels. The operation is with eight channels where the spacing between the channels of this uh, CWDM is 20 nanometers apart. That is how it uh, categorizes and, and also it uh, consumes uh, less energy in comparison uh, with the DMDM and uh, I mean DWDM and also it is less expensive. However, uh, the capacity of the links as well as the distance supporter is lesser. That could be one drawback of the CWDM. When we are moving into this uh, dense WDM, here the number of multiplex channels is much larger than uh, CWDM. And, and also it's either a 40 at the 100 gigahertz spacing or 80 with uh, 50 gigahertz spacing. So because of this, uh, they can transmit the huge quantity of data. So whenever you want to send a huge quantity of data, it is merely uh, purely possible through a single fiber link. And also this uh, DWDM is generally applied uh, in, in uh, uh, core areas of telecommunications and cable networks. And also it is uh, helpful in cloud, in, in cloud data centers for their IAS services. Next, still uh, just going ahead with this uh, DWDM. So this uh, dense wavelength division multiplexing is often called just wavelength division multiplexing. So this uh, dense wavelength division multiplexing, what, what actually does? It multiplexes multiple data streams onto a single fiber optic line. So the different wavelength lasers, they are, they are, they are called as lamp dust. So they transmit the multiple signals. So the each signal is carried on the fiber. Uh, and, and also it can be transmitted at a different rate from the other signals. And this uh, dense wavelength division multiplexing combines many, that is it can be 30, 40, 50, 60 or much more uh, onto one fiber. So that is one big advantage of this uh, DWDM. Next, you can see this, uh, the data signals uh, transmitted. So you have the uh, multiple users, the multiple lasers transmitting uh, data signals uh, down a single fiber optic line. So you can see this uh, single fiber optic uh, line and this, uh, the data signals are being uh, transmitted. So this is one thing which, which uh, classifies. And uh, yes, here uh, you, you could see a, a table. Again, the table which tells about the pros and cons, <laughs> the advantages and disadvantages of multiplexing techniques. So there are some multiplexing techniques. The one one is frequency division multiplex. The big advantage is, yes, it's a kind of simple, whereas the disadvantage, it, it works on analog signals only. And the back is predominantly used as it's, it's popular with radios, TVs, cables, and and uh, and, and uh, relatively inexpensive. And also the, all the receivers such as the cellular telephones, they do not need to be at the same location. And and also uh, the disadvantage is they are limited by frequency rates. That is one big disadvantage. And the next one is synchronous time division multiplexing. So the big advantage is the digital signals are relatively simple, commonly used with T1 and ISDF. And that is one advantage. And speaking about the disadvantage, yes, the bandwidth is wasted over here. And the next one is statistical time division multiplexing. And uh, here it's like uh, it's a kind of more efficient use of bandwidth. 
and the package can be of various sizes and the frame can contain control and error information yes so many things and uh, disadvantages it's more complex and synchronous time division multiplexing that is one disadvantage the next one is dense wavelength division multiplexing so here it has a very high capacity of fiber and and also it is scalable and the signals can have varying speeds but the drawback is the cost complexity that is one big drawback and the last one is co division multiplexing so the advantage is it works on large capacities and also scalable but the disadvantage is the complexity so this could be the advantages and disadvantages of the uh, various multiplexing techniques next we are going to have an insight about the transmission media so it's like we just going to ask about this uh, the transmission media it is nothing but the physical path between the transmitter and the receiver you'll have the transmitter on one side and receiver on the other side and the physical path between them is called as a transmission medium. So, so what do you call this uh, uh, transmission medium? It's a pathway that carries information from the sender to the receiver. And also, in one type of transmission medium, the transmission occurs through a solid medium. So, that can be a copper twisted pack, a copper coaxial pack, and optical fibers. Right. So, and the second type of transmission medium, it's kind of transmission which occurs wirelessly through the atmosphere or an outer space or water. So, if you're going to see the location, it is located below the physical layer and are directly controlled by the physical layer. And also, the data is transmitted normally in uh, electrical or in the form of electromagnetic signals. So, the signals are transmitted in the form of electromagnetic energy. You could see this uh, pictorial representation. You have the center and the receiver and you could see the transmission medium. So, this uh, the transmission medium can either be through a cable or an And uh, yes, this is how the transmission medium is being classified. If you see this transmission medium, it is being broken down into two uh, subclasses. One is called as a guide, the other one is called as unguided. So, the guided is a form of wired medium, whereas this unguided is a form of wireless medium. So, if you take out this guide, uh, guided, so there are uh, three subclasses. One is twisted pack cable, the second one is coaxial cable, and the third one is fiber optic cable. Whereas under this unguided, it's a form of wireless, so it uses uh, free space. So, this is how uh, the transmission of the transmission media uh, works out. And uh, we are just going to see something about uh, the twisted pack cable. So, as, as with the, uh, the name specification, a twisted pack cable consists of two conductors, yes. And if you're going to ask, it's, it's normally of copper. So, each with its own plastic insulation twisted together. And uh, if in this twisted pack cable, one of the wires is used to carry the signals to the receiver. <coughs> one will have, uh, is used to carry the signals to the receiver. And the other is only used as a ground reference. And uh, the receiver uses the difference between the two. and, and also. In addition to the signal sent by the sender on one of the wires, you will have interference. Yes, interference noise and crosstalk may affect both wires and create unwanted signals. If this, the big problem is it could be an interference, the noise and the crosstalk. So, what it leads? It leads to some uh, unwanted signals. So, if the two wires are parallel, so if you have the two wires to be parallel, the effect of these unwanted signals is not the same in both the wires because uh, they are at different locations, so which is related to the noise or crosstalk. So, for example, uh, if the one is closer and the other one is farther. So, when, when this happens, uh, this results in a difference at the receiver. So, uh, because of this, it's like uh, the, the, we don't get a proper reception. So, what we try to do by twisting the pass, by twisting the pass, it's giving parallel, a balance is maintained. So, for example, uh, suppose in one twist, one wire is closer to the noise source and the other one is farther. Okay, so in the next twist, the reverse is true. Okay, so uh, so once uh, this kind of a thing is being done, uh, twisting, so this twisting uh, makes it possible that both wires are equally uh, affected by external influences, the noise or the crosstalk. So this means that the receiver which calculates the difference between the two receives no unwanted signals. Uh, so, the, uh, the no unwanted signals parameters being cut out. The unwanted signals are mostly cancelled out. Yes, because when we go for this twisted pack cable. And also from the other uh, points of the discussion, whatever we have had. So, it's also uh, crystal clear that the number of twists per unit, that is, uh, it is it is of inch, example, the inch, has an effect on the quality of the cable. And uh, this is the representation of the twisted pack cable. So, you could uh, uh, see here uh, the outer insulator or the PVC. 
and and the the thing made up of the solid copper conductors so this is about the twisted pair cable thank you